welcome back. The change to a worm brought an instant response. I've had a calf about five pound and a bream about a pound and a half in the last two chucks. So that's obviously a bait for today. Both great big bites, you know, even I couldn't miss them. They were wrap rounds and uh, both good scraps. The carp was very cold, so he came in quite gently, which was good. But it just goes to show that, you know, you change your bait, change your luck. Sit there behind a, a rod for, you know, 20 minutes, half hour no bites, you think, oh, you know, this is going to be a bad day. Don't do that. Change your bait. Have a little change of your rig. <laughs> Look at that. Big drop back. Now, if it's going to go, it will go again. Just tighten up a little bit, because he might be coming towards us. Usually with the drop back bite, it'll drop slack and then it'll wrap round. Well that one obviously was a smaller fish, it managed to move the feeder along the bottom. But wasn't actually swimming off with it, so bait should be alright, it's a whole worm on there. So. I'll give it a minute, just to see whether he comes back. No, he hasn't come back, so what we do is we'll have it in, check our bait, doesn't take a second, it's worth doing. Because we might have no bait on there, which means we're sitting behind a bear hook if we don't look. Absolutely gorgeous day, it must be, or oh, at least 18 degrees I would have thought, incredible. Nope, bait's still on, so that's good. A bit of slime on there as well, so that was obviously a skim of bream having a go at it. Get that slime off straight away. Fill the feeder. Pop it out and see if we can get another one. You'll see the line slacken off as it sinks. It's sinking very well, so that's that's good news. Sometimes your bite comes before it even sinks when they're really having it. This is, oh yeah, a little bite started here. This is definitely a part of the armoury I must improve because come the winter, I've seen many matches, one on just the feeder, where I've struggled with the pole to even catch. So I will persevere and have several goes at this method to make sure I can get it half right. That little dig there might have just been a roach or something. The worm's probably too big for him, so he's had a little dig at it and left it. Still something there.
see all the little little tidy digs. So we have a little look at it. It's a lovely method when the weather's bad as well because you can get your umbrella up, unlike with a pole, and still fish fairly, fairly well. Yeah, we got it. Slide me round a little bit. Try and keep him away from those trees. I think it's probably a breed. Down from those trees, so I'll keep him rod low. Once I think I'm clear of the trees, I'll lift it up there. He's, he's seen those trees and he's found those trees. Yep, he's found those trees. That's the only trouble. Did you see the trees I mean? That's a nuisance. What I'll do... Oh, I think he's out. Hold on. Yep, we're all right. We've got him out, I think. Well, I'm hoping we have. Ah, oh, and he's off. Uh, he obviously weakened the hook line and got away, but that's okay. At least we haven't tethered a fish. We can live with that, that's fine. I think it, I still think it was a bream. I don't think it was a carp. The bream in here run to about three pounds so they're quite capable of dragging me into a into a snag. I'll keep the video running until it runs out. I don't know how long we'll have but uh, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope it's been some help to you and you've learned a few tips that, if nothing else. sink but the, the bite the, the quality of the bite is great once they're really having it you don't have to mess about they don't keep knocking and digging they're proper pull rounds but that's the only trouble fishing between islands you've got stags both sides of you in the winter it's where the fish want to be so you know you you have to sort of bite the bullet and go with it but uh, it can be frustrating when you you lose good quality fish into snags i all the time i'm using a free running ledger rig i'm not worried because i know that fish will drop the the feeder and will just have a hook which is hook barbless it will fall out within minutes so i know the fish safety is fine the people who use tethered rigs, you know, these ones that are tied direct to the line, they're, they're dangerous for the fish, very dangerous. Take a little bit of the bend out of that.
with all the advances with fishy tackle now, with the, the quality of the, the, the items you can buy to make sure you're using free running or hook rigs that will pop off as soon as you lose them. There really is no excuse now for using, you know, tethered leads. This rig we're using today is the most simple and basic of all. You know, it literally is just a ground bait feeder that can run up and down the line, it stops on a swivel. Six inches of twizzle, which is, I'll show you, I'll make some on another video and show you, they're very easy to make. They just keep everything in a line so you don't get tangles. And a little tiny 